When you think of a creepypasta game, you probably think of something like Sonic.exe or Mario. While these are valid examples, these games are simply based off of creepypasta. In reality, there are a few ROM hacks or standalone games that are very similar to creepypasta. Today, I have one game that I believe is very close to a real life creepypasta. A game that I actually covered in a prior video in which I said I would cover the story more in depth. The or Coronation Day. The game, my social media, and anything else important will be linked below. So, what exactly is this game about, and why do you consider this a real creepypasta game, you might ask? Well, the best way to answer that is to dissect the plot, obviously. This game has several different endings, and because of this I'll be using gameplay from Project Detonado, who basically 100% of the game, and showed us a lot of easter eggs. Please go check out their video linked below or play the game yourself as the creator's patch will also be linked below. All of that being said, let's actually get into the game now. The game opens up with Mario in an empty level with the text, Again? This will happen a lot, trust me. If you hold R at the beginning, there will be a faceless Princess Peach standing there as well. Already very creepypasta-like. You'll then be transported to a barren overworld wherein an eyeless Mario stands in the middle of nowhere. The level consists of Mario simply walking to the right, however during this time little things change. First, the screen gets slightly darker, and then a silhouette of Princess Peach with red eyes appears out of an overhead tree. As he walks past an object flying in the background, we soon realize that the sky darkening was because it was about to rain. As it begins raining, we're greeted with our first text box. Leave this to me. Mario keeps walking until he starts to see what looks like corpses. The next text box says, You really are a shadow of what you were back then. Well, every good thing has to end. This sounds like a conversation between two individuals. About what? I'm not sure. Peach flies behind Mario as the music changes into a sinister tune. At this point, the player finally stumbles upon the first living entity outside of themselves. Well, and Princess Peach. A Rex enemy with red eyes that's crying a red bodily fluid. I'm sure if you're familiar with creepypasta, this aspect of a character immediately seems on brand. And trust me, the title of this video is pretty accurate. Peach takes it away only for a corpse to fall onto the screen. As Mario walks along, a laying Princess Peach briefly flashes onto the screen, and soon we're greeted with another text box. Oh, that look is precious. You'll make it big for sure. It sounds like show business to me. Or maybe it's something a bit more sinister, but I'll come to those conclusions a bit later. The screen darkens a bit more as the landscape becomes more corrupted. Eventually, the player enters a completely black screen which says, I believe I am the god of this forest. Are you looking for me? I am the one that- Immediately after exiting, the player is ambushed by a corrupted Princess Peach. At this point, the landscape is basically totally destroyed. When Mario finally escapes, he ends up somewhere even creepier. He's now a black silhouette with pure white eyes walking through a completely corrupted landscape. A text box appears. My lungs hurt. Please take them out. This is very reminiscent of not only gaming creepypasta, but of a video that some ordinary gamers made years ago titled, A Creepy Private Message. Again and again, thrusting, oh my god, oh that's sick. Oh, what is this? Mommy help. This is not fair and good. What is this? Any de any dazed blood on body. Yeah, she got stabbed, man. What are those bones? Ooh. Possessed cardboard boxes? More text boxes appear as the player continues to walk. What color is your favorite? After Mario walks out of the area, it fades into Princess Peach in a more peaceful version of the first room. Clearly, this is before whatever tragedy befell the land. During this time, you can still attack enemies. After the screen darkens, text appears. Please, help me. I can't stop. 
Bring me your lungs. Oh, yes. Now's the time. Go back and show them who you really are. Interesting. You really had no idea, did you? You built it. And after that, you... A voice inside of Peach's head, one possessing her, is causing her to be drawn to morphing into her true form, or the form that the voice wants her to turn into. She walks to the edge of a cliff while facing a dark silhouette of herself that seems a bit different. Tried. What did she try to do? Resist it? Mario walks through a version of the first level that's now tinged red. Hey honey, come over here for a minute. What do you think? Isn't that color a little harsh now? No. He loves red. After this, if you hold down R, you'll see the corrupted Princess Peach with the words, I watch, painted under her. On to the second ending. The path begins the exact same way as the prior one, however there is some different dialogue. I would check if he lost them, but his hair covers everything. Possibly meaning that some unseen force has power over everything in the land? While running from Princess Peach, we see a new text box saying, Don't you dare touch my prey. After Mario escapes back to the corrupted area, we have new text boxes yet again. My throat is all closed up. Won't you please cut it open for me? You bow to me, crook. At this point, we can assume that the voice asking to be hurt over and over is either a voice inside of the character's head trying to make them hurt themselves, or a victim who may just be the same person as the one who was told that they would quote-unquote make it big for sure. In the Princess Peach segment, we have more new text boxes. You smell so red. What did you do? Remember, he loves red. Someone is being corrupted by him. Crown her. Instead of walking forward, turn around and you'll fall right through the bridge. This makes sense as the text box tells the player to go back and show them who you really are. Although it seems like that's the ending, in reality the second ending hasn't concluded yet. Upon restarting the level, Mario will be seen falling down before a text box appears. Before you start, you have to pull up the weeds. It sounds like an allegory to getting rid of certain people or things. I really like the underwater woods aesthetic here. After picking the weeds and falling down, it says, Oh yes! That's it. Now, gather the wood for the walls. After grabbing the wood, you'll fall again. Oh yes! Just a little more for the roof. More wood and more falling. Oh god, yes! Amazing work. They love it. And then the game freezes. On to the third ending. Same start, same area. As usual, we do have different text boxes though. Where did all of them go? It'll be tough, but you'll get your second chance. Unlike the usual, the player allows Princess Peach to attack them. After restarting, you can press the L button to see another version of the corrupted Peach. To me, the four forms we've seen so far are different stages of her transformation or different levels of severity of her corruption. And then again, these could also represent different parts of Peach's destroyed mind. While walking, you'll notice an eyeless and shadow silhouette Mario, two forms very reminiscent of Peach's. Several Marios appear as the player climbs up a vine and goes into a very ominous door. Going into this door will reveal the house that Mario was supposed to build in the first ending, and his sacrifice remains. Leaving this area will take you to an underwater area. Text boxes appear. Oh god, who is this guy? I tried yelling at him so he would go away, but my voice was gone. And now he's just staring at me through the window above and... The eyeless ghost of the Mario who was sacrificed stares directly at the player. Let's move on to the fourth ending. Same start, same first area, a couple of new text boxes. They made it all from scratch. The player is attacked by the corrupted Peach again, and while going back into the area with the alternate Mario forms, the player stands in the silhouette of Mario which triggers a text box. The heart. After turning around and heading to a bridge, pressing start will cause the bridge to break. This time restarting will throw you into a shadowy land that's currently burning down. Its shadow towered in sight, horns larger than its head, sounds that weren't from this time. What a staggering sight. The answer lies on the collection of worlds. It simply goes from front to back. When the player presses Y, A, up, X, B, left, B, right, and A, this happens. July 31st, 1992. I am truly impressed by their detective skills. The evidence bestows me. 
This must be what it feels like to be king. And I did not even need his help. Where you is he? I am the king, for he is not you. Feast upon the flowering organs, for he is king. Notice how king is in red here? Interesting. Fifth ending time. Same start, same first area, but this time instead of moving, the player stands still. Is that really it? You're even more useless than the last one. Thanks for nothing. He is calling for me again. I have to go. If you disable the third layer and emulation options on the map, you'll see he did not know written over and over. So, I guess I should try to make some sense of this, huh? I'll start this off by saying that this is my interpretation. You can speculate below yourselves. Basically, to me, Mario represents some type of sacrificial lamb, someone that's necessary to fuel not only the king, but the king's subjects. For example, the house he built was likely symbolic of an altar, a place at which an animal could be sacrificed. This is why his remains are in the house in a different ending, and why his voice says that they would be happy with it. Peach is a subject of this king, either that or possessed by said king. I believe that over time she tried to resist the king's corruption or temptation, but couldn't resist it any longer. The majority of the text boxes in this story are either Peach's inner monologue or the voice of the king. The reason I infer that is because I believe the king was telling Peach she would be a good vessel by saying, You'll make it big for sure. Or that the king was telling Mario what to build in the section I referenced prior. A lot of the more intense boxes either seem to be Peach wanting to harm herself or the king expressing some type of frustration. The vague nature of these text boxes is very similar to how Creepypasta will commonly use cryptic language to make things seem more mysterious and therefore scarier. Again, some text boxes may not necessarily fit into these two categories, but the vast majority do in one way or another. The identity of the king is uh, kind of hard for me to figure out. This is where I'm basically 100% wrong, but I'll go for it anyway for the fun of it. The king seems like they may be a real-life individual who's running some type of, I don't know, violent underground scene, uh, hence why they told Peach why they would make it big. Maybe something snuff-related? The fact that they talk about evidence in the monologue makes me feel like someone's investigating him, which ties back to my theory. The date in the monologue doesn't bring up anything significant to Mario or a cults off of a Google search, so I can only really assume I either don't know what's going on at all or that the date doesn't really mean anything. Really, the only way this could have been closer to a real creepypasta is if he attacked the player in real life afterward. 